welcome to the All Metal Mode Podcast with your host, Michael Hare. Tune in every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern with co-host Gypsy Jules, and every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern with Matt Hoffman as we talk to guests, discuss metal detectors, equipment, and everything treasure-related. Feel free to join in the discussion in the chat room during the show, and please, if you like what you hear, we'd appreciate you taking a moment to hit that like button and share the link with your friends. We hope you enjoy the show. The All Metal Mode Podcast starts right now. Hey everybody, this is Mike Karen. and you're listening to the All Metal Mode Podcast with myself and Gypsy Jules. I have to apologize for last week. I've had some stuff I gotta get done and um it's just been crazy busy. I apologize. I don't know if we were on the last week or not before that, were we, Gypsy? Uh I don't think we were. I was out of town, I think, and uh and then, uh, yeah, I think I was out of town then, wasn't I? I, I was don't just getting remember. back, traveling. Oh, I think so. I think we missed the last couple of weeks, but uh, I don't think anybody <laughs> missed us too much. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so, how was your uh, trip? Trips? Uh, it was good. It was good. Uh, went to. Um, Let's see, first I went to East Texas um, to my parents and then uh, went to uh, Colorado and uh, was at the um, the uh, Watts booth there with, um, with a great group. It was a lot of fun. I got to talk to a lot of people about metal detecting and, and you know, the hobby and world prospecting and all of that kind of good stuff. So it was a lot of fun. That's but, awesome. Um, yeah, um, there it was a really neat um, ex sports expo. Um, it was pretty huge. There was around five hundred booths there, wow. and uh, so they had everything from fishing, hunting, um, all kinds of sport recreational type vehicles, you know, off-road stuff, uh, really neat stuff um, that, you know, would be great, too, when you're out there, um, metal, you know, metal detecting and stuff to take out out in the woods and on some adventures. Uh, they had all kinds of, of good stuff. Were all the major manufacturers there? Yeah, there was a lot. Um, even the Outdoor Channel was there. Oh, um, cool. But, but uh, yeah, we were actually the only one that had anything to do with metal detecting there. Oh, and, really? Uh, I felt like if I would have had a bunch of metal detectors there with me, I probably could have sold the heck out of them. <laughs> probably, yeah. I bet you could have. <laughs> That's well, awesome. Yes, uh, Sean, I'm kind of doing some demos uh, with um, the um, uh, Garrett. Let's see. Um, Wayne had the Garrett AT Gold there. And then um, um, Nugget Noggin was there, Michael Bennett. And uh, he brought his Max. And then we had the Garrett's that we were giving away with a uh, Garrett. Um, Ace 400 and 350 that we were giving away that Garrett gave us oh, to um, cool. do his drawings and uh, also a, a wireless uh, Z-Link uh, set with the pin pointer and the headphones and then also some gold pans and stuff so that was fun on the last day we drew all the winners and and gave away those and uh, that was fine. Oh, man, I'm tired. I'm <laughs> sorry, guys. That boy kicking my butt. He's a handful. <laughs> he's 
he now can climb on the couches. There's no keep. We, we've been pinning him in the living room and kind of turning him loose. And there's no more of that. He's like a. Steph hates when I say it, but he's like a little cockroach. He's fast and he can get in anywhere and <laughs> through anything. And uh, that boy is just uh, wild. Fun. I need a leash or a like a big ocean reel and rod. You know, put him in a harness, and when he gets too far, just set it and jerk him back. I don't know. Steph doesn't like my ideas. <laughs> doesn't like my ideas. Yeah. Oh, well, I just okay. keep saying, I just keep On saying, he's, yeah, leash. I just keep <laughs> saying he's getting closer to be able to take out metal detecting. That's all. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But he's a handful. Keeps me busy. So, uh, what else you been up to? Did you get to do any detecting in Colorado? I didn't. It was so sad. I didn't even uh, get to bring my detector. They said that if we had time to go detect, and they all had machines that I could use. I would have um, stole, stole but, Wayne's. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And uh, it snowed one day while we were there, but uh, we were so busy with the booth and stuff, and that there wasn't, didn't, didn't there wasn't really time. Now, speaking of that, you haven't actually used a gold, have you? No, I haven't. Um, I got to kind of play with it a little there in the booth, but I haven't used the gold, just the Max and the Pro. And I um, kind of wish I had a gold to compare. Um, I mean, I looked at it, looked it over a little, and, and, you know, I've seen videos on it, but course that's not the same as using it but yeah. uh i got to i got to use one for a bit um when i was a dealer garrett actually sent me one instead of a an at pro that i had ordered for stock and uh so i took it out and used it and i, I was really impressed and people tend to think they go deeper and stuff and i have to agree but you, you know the at pro is deep but i don't know that that uh, that gold's just a, a little more sparky, I think, and uh, I've always kind of thought it was um strange how popular the AT Pro is over the gold. Like you don't hear much about the gold, and it really is different. Yeah, and it's a sparky detector for sure. I think it's because yeah, they 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 were what about a hundred dollars more. That might be the part of it yeah being a hundred dollars more um and uh and it's it's interesting how even still you know they're they're similar to the pro but yet they're still different and i guess because of i guess isn't it a lower frequency i have to no no it's it's higher frequency higher frequency yeah Um, than the pro higher than the pro yep Huh. And uh, so, is it, I mean, being a little bit higher frequency, you think, okay, let's see, Bill says 18 kilohertz gold, 15 kilohertz, 18, 18 pro. Now, I okay. talked to Garrett about this a long time ago. The coils are interchangeable, though. Yeah, they are. Yeah. You can interchange any of the AT series uh, coils. He said, "Knew that was coming." It always does. I'm not sure what he's talking about. You didn't hear me blow my nose, right? I hit mute, right? I didn't hear it. <laughs> okay, good. I, I I thought I hit <laughs> mute. No, that's good. Um, yeah, I don't know. You just don't hear as much about them as. But I've seen some really good videos on it showing. You know that the the gold's deeper and different things. So I don't know. I, I guess maybe the price, or because it's called the gold, people assume you know it's more. more for, of I gold. mean, it is. I mean, it is leaning more towards gold, of course, but it doesn't right. mean you can't use it to find coins and relics. Right. I've heard that the AT Gold's. I mean, a really good relic. Relic. Here I go. Relic machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, a really good relic machine too. So. There you go, guys. Relic machine. Gypsy started it. Everybody get out get out of glass. You might as well get your shots lined up. We're going to get into relic machines tonight. 
<laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, I was looking at some stuff about frequencies yesterday because, you know, you don't hear much about frequencies anymore. In fact, it was funny for a while. I, um, it was, a, a friend of mine was wanting to start another channel and we were trying to think of uh, a YouTube channel for metal detecting and it was a group of us and they're trying to we were trying to think of a name and I was like, I think we should call it what the frequency <laughs> <laughs> But anyway uh, I don't know how many people would like that or get that, but anyway. That's funny. Yeah, I frequencies um I don't know. I don't know what I think think about frequencies sometimes because, like, um, I I can't tell you off the top of my head, but like, well, to Soros, I know that the the outlaw is quite a bit lower than like the Taon, and but I can tell you the outlaw will, will keep right up with the tay on even on small stuff like i i mean y- you know the higher fr- the frequency th- the better it uh, is on small targets but how much how much difference does there have to be to really make a difference because i want to say there's four or five kilohertz difference on between the the tay on and the outlaw and i couldn't tell you a difference i mean I found deep, tiny little objects with both of them. Um, I've hunted, you know, like, I'm going to say, I, I tend to hunt around 8 kilohertz on the Rudis and, and about 14, and I, I really can't tell a difference. I mean, it's a little more chatty in 14, but I still tend yeah. to find, I mean, you know, where's the cutoff? I, I mean, yeah. Um, the impact, I remember hunting in 20 and I'm finding, uh, uh, you know, I found a little pellet at a couple, I don't want to dig stuff that small there. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I guess maybe relic hunting, but where's the cutoff? And then what about these detectors that are, you know, the, um, oh, some of the, the gold detectors now are like running 40 kilohertz and. Um, what's the, the dais, I want to say some of their coils go up to like 60 kilohertz. Like what? I'm not sure why, I'm not sure where the cutoff is or why you'd want to run that high. I mean, I get, you know, the, 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 the lower the kilohertz, the more, you know, it is like uh, a cash hunter, you know, cash mode, you know, like the, the rudest pretty much has a a cash mode. Um, huh. all the, most of the knock to macros, the same thing where you want that huh. real low frequency. But when you get into those high frequencies, what's the cutoff? I mean, how much right. do you right. need? I don't know. Huh. Wait, way in guys. If you got any answers or, you know, have any, uh, anything, any comments or anything way in, in the chat, we'd love to hear it. But yeah, so I don't get why some of these are so high. Like going to a trashy park and trying to hunt in twenty kilohertz is is too much for me. I don't want to listen to BBs and pellets and you know little pieces of right. aluminum that's you know the quarter the size of your fingernail. You know I don't need to listen to all that. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I find it curious. It's something that I do not know enough about for sure. Yeah, me neither. I, I mean, I'm curious what the highest running frequency is for for detector. I mean, most detectors on the market right now. I mean, you said there was some up to 60 kilohertz. That's... I think. Don't hold me to it. I'm going to look it up while we're talking. All right. Um, keep talking, though. Um... Yeah, Bill said different wavelengths at different frequencies. And, yeah, that's the neat. That's what I was reading more about is like, um, you know, like a VLS that, that operates at a lower frequency, but, you know, the lower frequencies have a longer wavelength, uh, 
which makes them more sensitive sensitive to the higher, you know, conduct conductivity on this, you know, conductive eye, you know, targets. Um, um, I'm reading uh, the nine inch high frequency Deus coil, thirteen to fifteen point seven, twenty six to thirty one, and fifty to fifty nine. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I am definitely not one to to talk technical. Um, I can tell you from experience and why I might like something, but when you start getting technical and, and talking like an engineer, I'm not the guy. You know, just like <laughs> just like concentric coils. In my experience of detecting, I prefer concentric coils and heavy iron. Um, yeah. I've just seemed to have a, a lot better luck. Why I really can't go, I can't go into that or, you know, because they say that it's a cone and it goes down. It looks like a cone. Um, yeah. and it's not good in trashy areas. So then why is it good in iron? Um, or why do I, why is my experience that it's a lot better in iron? Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I like concentric coils overall, really. I've even used them in trashy parks and stuff and. I, I think they work great, but most people tell you double D is the way to go. I know yeah, people. Um, I like both concentric and, you know, I mean, where I live right now, the soil isn't all that mineralized. So, I mean, the concentric coil does great around here. When I go to East Texas, you know, and I'm in that, there, in East Texas, I mean, you can hardly even run a concentric coil because of the iron ore there. Uh, there's so much iron ore, and it's I, just certain areas, not all of East Texas, but where I hunt a lot in East Texas, I mean, it's it's crazy. Absurd, and, huh? It was, yeah, until um, some of the more modern double D coils came out that, I mean, you can get, but maybe... Three, three inches on. I mean, it was just that bad with the hmm. soil, the way it was over there. All kinds of chatter, and didn't matter what. I tried all kinds of detectors and machines in East Texas until, um, you know, the double Ds got really popular. You know, you used to can find very many double Ds. It was concentric coils mostly was what was on the market. When I first started, it seemed. Um, David David says double D's go deeper with a question mark. I don't think so. no they they don't. Um, they I uh, the reason you'll find that a lot of your small coils like your your hockey puck size and stuff, um, you know, to seven eight inches. A lot of the reasons those are a, are a concentrics is because concentrics will go deeper now at the extreme depths it's a little small end of a cone and you really got to overlap and stuff but no uh concentrics tend to go deeper they are affected by mineralization more people say that they're affected more by um by trash but I kind of don't agree with that in my personal experience with the detectors I've ran. But um, that's just my opinion. I think concentrics work great in the trash, but I have heard not mineralization. So I, I don't know. But no, they, they the manufacturers will even talk about uh, um, how how concentrics will go deeper. Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, for the most part, yeah, concentrics will go, will go deeper. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Matt's. Hey, Matt. T- tomorrow night's hey, your Matt. night. Get out of here, Matt. <laughs> we don't need you around here, Matt. Matt Hoffman's in chat. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like I like concentric coils a lot. I, I don't really fully understand the frequencies and the. the way, I mean, I get it. The lower they are, the more it's you know it's it's going to hit on big stuff deep. The higher they are, small stuff, you know, it'll hit on small stuff better. Um, you know, but, oh, man, Wayne's here. <laughs> hey. What's... Nice to see you around, Wayne. Let 
I'm getting, I'm texting and everything else. I got a text message. I got a question for everybody. Here's a good one. Ah, I don't know how to ask that. I guess I kind of need more information. I've got a buddy looking to get into metal detecting and, uh, he's asked me what to get and I got to talk to him about specifically what he wants to do. And, but I'm curious, I, when I find out, I'll be curious what, uh, what what some other people might think would be a good detector for him. Where does he live? He lives in Ohio. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lives cool in, over in Ohio. Real mild. Real mild. Um, okay. Just about all of Ohio that I'm aware of. Yeah. So I don't know, but like, I think he's leaning more towards relic hunting, like field hunting, like what I do. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know his price range. We've talked about, I don't know. I told him to call me. I'll get more information and maybe we'll do a show. Maybe I'll make him call in one night as a guest and we'll all help him figure out what detector to use. Hmm. Matt says thank you, Pro. Well, if he wants to spend that much, I don't know. And I'm not sure. If he wants to, to rally hunt in the fields, I'm going to recommend um, probably a Mojave or something, uh, Tesoro. I, I, man, I love the Tesoros. And uh, I I think that would be really, they're easy to use and all that. So, I don't know. We'll see. Did you know I got a Mojave? No, I don't know if you told me that. Brian from Digger's Den sent me one. Cool. Mm-hmm. Because he, he loves me. Has he ever sent you a detector? No, he oh, hasn't. He don't love you like he loves me. He does not. <laughs> no, we I'm did some him. we did some trading kinda. Oh cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like old Brian. I like Brian. And hey, for our listeners, if anybody's interested in a metal detector, I know we got a couple used ones right now. What an AT Pro and a TDI, uh, I believe, a white TDI. TDI. Mm-hmm. You can always call me. You can call Gypsy. You can or email us or find us on Facebook or Digger's Den on Facebook, Brian. I think we make a good team. You know, I, I've got my specialties, you've got your specialties, and Brian's got his specialties. And we all have different experiences. That's true. That's I true. think so. I definitely do. I think we I make think a good team. I think it's time to trade in my mind lab and get the, the Garrett to Gold. <laughs> Which, you've got the Explorer, don't you? The Explorer SC. Yeah, I like that detector. I wish I could, I wish I could afford it. I wish I could afford. It. I'd like that. I'd, I'd like an Explorer and E Track again. They're just so you know. I I say that, but then it's like, oh, the weight. Like sometimes I'll think that, and then I'll think about the weight, and it's like, no, no, I don't. Yeah, that was one heavy machine. After a while, swinging that baby, my arm. Mm-hmm. Oh man! I'm, I'm telling you, I have shoulder issues from an E-Track Explorers. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, but I do miss them. They, I mean, I think they're even Explorers. I think they're some of the best at at IDing. They're good. Yeah, they're good. And even at depth, I mean, yeah. We do have good depth. Now, I'll tell you what. Um, I don't know if you and I have talked about it too much. I know we... Um, I mean, I know we have, but... Um, I got the new Rudis with... Or the Rudis Alder 71 with the 2.0, 2.0 V, I think, update. And uh, uh-huh. I'll tell you what. that That is a an amazing amazing detector um it's it's really kind of mind-blowing um even the last one i mean i'm not even talking about this really this is the same one as the last model but it's um 
it's got a few things added. And um, somebody said healing. I don't think I'm with it tonight because I keep seeing stuff pop up in chat. And I'm like, mm, I don't know what we're talking about. Um, sorry, David, I'm not following you. I'm not sure. Do I, do I sound like I've been huffing helium balloons or what? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, oh, that the Rudis probably IDs coins better than, than anything else I've ever used but the E-Track, the Explorers, and the CTX. But it's real. It's right up there with it. Um, I mean, it is amazing at, at IDs and, but then like this new one or this new update, it has iron audio and I went out with it one day and, and I didn't, I had iron audio on and nothing was, nothing was happening. I'm still listening to iron. Mm-hmm. I call, I called Matt up real quick and I'm like, Hey, look this up for me. I'm doing something wrong. Well, whatever you you disc disc out th- uh-huh. that sets your audio that sets your iron audio so you got to disc it out first so it still lets it in but you can you can set it at um y- so it controls what you've got it's a little bit different than what i'm used to but it worked better than anything else i've used with iron audio it, it was wow. really kill and it, it goes from 1 to 30 you can set the iron audio at and uh but lightning fast that thing is lightning fast um i just I'm, i love everything about that detector just love it um i'm trying to think oh and then i don't know that this would really be a thing here in the united states we won't talk about it much we need to talk about some garrett stuff and and uh some different things but um Negative 90 to plus 90 and 0 to 120, you can set up whichever scale you want. And huh. the, the, the 0 to, or the negative 90 to plus 90, I don't know what I said. Is that what I said? That's what I meant. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> negative 90 to plus 90, what it does is, um, what I've heard, like o- over in Europe, that negative 90 scale they can actually pick out pottery and stuff. What? Yeah, like it'll pick up pottery. And st- is what I've been told. I don't know how that works, but um, I guess Rudis had a detector. One of their earlier models had that, and people really missed it because they could pick out pottery with that negative 90 scale is what I heard. Hmm. Yep, yep. So I don't know, but I've had a lot of fun playing with that and the new updates and stuff. Oh, something else. Probably one of the coolest features I've ever seen on a detector. When you have to ground balance, how important is ground balance? It it depends on the machine. For me, I I depends on the soil for me. I I usually always ground balance where I live because of the soil and especially when I'm hunting. I mean, what you, I'm not the soil. I mean, you 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 agree that ground balance is pretty important, correct? Right, right. Well, you can. This one is is automatic, um, but you can still get a a, a bad ground balance and let me look it up to make sure i actually have have it right here in front of me i've got the i practically been when i get a new detector i, I practically carry the manual around with me everywhere yeah um okay if you get a, a good ground balance you get an okay it'll just say okay on the screen if you get Okay, which is good, but if you get, if it's not so good, but it's, you know, still doable, you'll get a question mark. Well, mm-hmm. no, hold on. That's, that, that pretty much, I, I would redo it. And then there's one exclamation point to four exclamation points. 
Mm-hmm. So, so what, you know, what happens a lot of times we ground bounce and we think we've got a good ground bounce, but we don't, um, this'll, this, this'll tell you, you know, you, you got to make sure, you know, you get that, that indication on exactly what, what kind of ground balance you just got out of that detector. Mm-hmm. And I think that's huge to make sure it's properly ground balanced. Cause yeah. most detectors, you don't, I mean, you know, um, but you, you know what I mean? It ground balances out and it's okay, but that doesn't mean it, it's not higher than it should be or lower. You, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So and that's, a, that's a really, really cool feature. Very impressive feature on that, that they added on this new update. Yeah, the AT Max, one of the features I really like about it is there's times like around here that sometimes I won't always ground balance right away with it. I'll get a feel, I'll start turning the machine on and it has an automatic ground balance that it'll automatically balance. But, uh, you know, sometimes you can just get a feel that it's not properly ground balanced or, I don't know, I can kind of tell... Uh, by the way, my machines are acting, so I'll just re-ground balance it right in the middle of hunting, sometimes different areas, because sometimes that tr- soil, too, can change just from several feet away. I mean, or where I live, sometimes you can go from, like, red clayish dirt straight to the dark black soil and then on to something else, just not far away, so... um I I will re-ground balance mine a lot while I'm out hunting the same, you know, same mm-hmm. areas just by what I'm digging and what the soil looks like, too. Yeah, it depends on where I'm at. I, I mean, you, you know, if I'm in where I'm at here in Texas, it's really not an issue. When, where I, when I was in Ohio, it's not an issue, but um, it it's kind of like... You know, one good thing is usually when when you need to re ground balance, your detector will start getting a little chatty and stuff, and tell you, "Hey, I better re ground balance." But yeah. you know, there there was a couple sites I hunted in in Ohio, um, that definitely gave me issues. Um, and even here in Texas, like there's a a school I hunt, an old school where it, it kind of goes from gravelly dirt, which I'm guessing's fill dirt to sand to good dirt and i found i got a ground balance quite a bit over there in ohio i had a an old fairgrounds where i did really i found over 40 silver coins out of there and um wow. i had th- there were areas that there was like sand it was real loomy sand and uh i'd have to i'd have to do it over there so yeah good times huh. good times but yeah, I don't Ryan know. says in the chat that he rarely ground balances. He's in Texas. I was just wondering where he's from. Matt says mm-hmm. most of the spots in Ohio I hunt being properly ground balanced really makes a huge difference. Vast change in soil types in small areas. Man, I, I'm surprised, Matt. I, I, that's not my experience in the southern part of the state. Ryan said Forney area. I don't know where that's at. Do you know where that's at? I got to look it up because I've heard of it. I've lived all over Texas. I should know where that is. It sounds so familiar. I'll keep telling you some different things. about. I know, like, right. talking about the rudest, I, I know there's they're not big here in the United States. They, they're not. Um, so I'm sorry, guys. I'm just really excited about the rudest. It, it is just incredible. It also has, um, I think it's got six or seven um, stock programs that you could um, you could modify. Well, they still have those same programs, but now they have four blank user programs you can set up, which I thought was really cool. Um, uh I mean, that's, that's the gist of it. I don't want to talk about it too much. I know they're not 
big here, but I would so love to see Rudis offer them here. They're great detectors. Uh, Bill said had a place been hitting since 2014. So many nails and iron, there was no place to ground bounce, so I cleaned a two by two area out near the entrance and ground bounce there every time. That's funny, Bill. I've had places. Well, usually I can get out of that area, you know, and ground bounce, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Matt said a lot of houses and stuff had been filled in. Yeah, I mean, I'm always, I can usually tell once I'm good with whatever detector I'm using. You know, once I've got enough experience on it, I can start telling when I need, you know, real quick when I need to ground balance. Yeah, me too, usually. You guys said, where's he, where, now where's he located from me? Do you know, is he probably not far? He's probably not far at all from you. Oh, no kidding. Hmm. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I just met a I just met a guy last no I don't think it was the last time I was like time before that uh when I was out. Um real nice guy, local I, I hope to metal detect with sometime soon. I've met more people in this area than I thought there was. Yeah, I bet. I just uh met a a guy that lives right near my friend where he was watching my video and uh, on uh, YouTube, and he saw the Guadalupe River there, and he's like, well, he messaged me and said, hey, wh- what area of the Guadalupe are you on there? I recognize it. Mm. And then found out he's real close to one of my friends. I'm surprised she's not on here. Sometimes she's on here in the chat. Um, Misty, she's thinking about getting um, the Garrett AT Pro because she lives like, Clearly, she can see the river from her house. <laughs> and uh, oh. so I'm hoping to next week get up there and um, go uh, detecting with her and um, hopefully get to meet this guy, too. He says he's got a Tesoro. Uh, I can't remember which Tesoro right now. But um, anyway... I'm looking forward to that. The guy I just recently met here in town, he's got some great finds and he's running to, he's got two Tesoros. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and he's kicking butt with him. Um, I want Kingston 18, 6, 1816. I'm wondering where he's from. He says he's got the whites machine, has a ground tracking. Um, he said Ohio too. I'm curious where he's from in Ohio. Oh, uh, yeah, we got quite a few in the chat, Yeah, good, good little turnout. We're talking about, it hasn't been as many in the chat, but more listening later, but we appreciate all of you being in the chat tonight. I've been lazy. I need to go find us more guests. That's why. I've been lazy. I've got a few, a few for us. I just haven't followed up with them. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. There's been all kinds of stuff lately. Um. But uh, after the end of the month, hopefully I'll be able to get out more, do a lot more metal detecting and uh, after my job ends. So a lot more time to detect. So I'm, I'm going to have to come bug you, Mike. I'm down. Come up. I'm cu- come up. I'm looking real quick because I know I've heard of Kingston. Ah, I know where, he's in a good area. Yeah, boy, I've done. I've that's funny because I've done a little hunting in Kingston, not much, but that's a good area. Um, Chillicothe area is really old part of Ohio. A lot of early settlers and uh, Indians and stuff there. And he's in he's in Kingston. So, how how long you been detecting? I know quite a few guys in your area. Um, that part of Southern Ohio. I'm actually, I'm from Dayton, lived in Lancaster. Um, I don't know some guys around that area, Chillicothe and stuff. Uh, there's a great big park in Chillicothe 
and uh, it's, it's right on the river. And, you know, I hunted the crap out of that. And I, I think the, I, the only thing I recall ever finding out of there, out of there, of course, I hunted a lot of houses and stuff around there too, but, uh, and farmland, I actually hunted some really good farmland around Kingston. Um, but that park, I, I did manage to find, uh, an Indian head, but that's all I ever found out of that great big park. I don't know. Sometimes. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That park kicked my butt. One of them parks that kicked my butt. He said he just started last summer. Uh, you, you are in just an absolutely great area. Yeah, build near the old armory building. Did you ever find anything out there? Man, I, I mean, I probably did. I mean, I hunted it probably three, four times, not a bunch. If I found myself down that way. Now, there was another park, like on, I want to say, like the West End. Um, I can't even remember now what come out, but some really good stuff come out of there. Some really good you, stuff. You, you see his coast? He's only 12 miles from Chillicothe? Chillicothe. Yeah, Chillicothe. Yeah, Chillicothe is a great, great area. Great area. Maybe All the. Y'all. All of you from Ohio make me want to move to Ohio. <laughs> let's do it. Let's let's pack up our families, and um, all let's right. do let's do it. I'm all about Sounds it. Good. Um, yeah, Kingston. Um, man, good area. I, I did field hunt some around there. I've got some friends up around. Um, oh well, Lancaster. I've still got some friends up that way, and then. Uh, Circleville area, that's all good, but you're closer to Chillicothe. That's really, really good. Um, hunting, you do you hunt those fields at all up there? Overlaying fine rhythm old house. I finally got mad into that. Did I tell you that? Mad into what? Field hunting. Oh, yeah, 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 like in the spring spring of uh 2018 i was really talking it up and he didn't find much he he got a couple bad bad field sites in a row and um then then all of a sudden this fall he got into some good ones and he gets it now um i'm telling you it's hard to explain to somebody but you know matt put it really good he said you find so many unique things and it's so different. You dig it all because it's, you, you know, there's no modern trash, at least very little or none, you know, unless it was tore down in right. modern times. That's but what I would love. There's no trash. <laughs> oh, here goes Matt again talking about giving me more detecting lessons. Oh, geez. Here we go. Now, Matt said he was going to. Uh, he said, "Let's let's start a, a GoFundMe to get Gypsy and Mike moved to Ohio." Yeah, I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And Wayne and Wayne says um, Tahiti. He's just ready to go to Tahiti, move to Tahiti, <laughs> and do beach hunting. I'd like to, you know, and I wish I could do more beach hunting in the summer here in Texas. But it's it's those big rocks on our beaches. I don't get why they do that. I'd love to go down to the the golf sometime and hunt and um do some water hunting some beach hunting but boy it ain't no good around me for the lakes but yeah and it's tough the lakes here are real picky about you know you going out there and stuff there's some will let you and some won't matt cracks me up on giving me more detecting lessons jeez he <laughs> he found one half time and all of a sudden his head's all big yeah, I don't know if I told you this, but he found that half dime, and um, I had to carry his head around after that. Like I had to literally stand behind him and balance it because it got so big, it was ready to fall <laughs> over. He couldn't support it. You know, I taught the guy how to field hunt. I got us the places, and then his head got so big, and he's going to teach me lessons now. That's what kind of guy he is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to go so bad when you invited uh, me to come up to Ohio. Oh gosh! Well, we really didn't get into anything good. I mean, we found a couple good finds, but it just it did not turn out. You, you know what's? Because I wasn't there. 
with you. Yeah, yeah. you weren't good. You weren't weren't there, and you're probably good <laughs> luck. You're probably right. You to probably look. I, I understand you're a woman, and and I'm polite, but. Don't think if I take you to one of my spots and you start killing it that I, that I won't knock you over the head with a shovel. I mean, I do not. I don't care, man, woman, what. I am. I'm not against. No, I wouldn't do that. I'm just. You're going to wake up with your with all your fines gone, and you're going to have to walk back to wherever we started. And that's all. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll go. Where did my fines go? <laughs> Why is my head hurt? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big knot on my head. Uh, do you use a Do you use a Garrett carrot? I do. Well, if yours is newer than see. mine, I'll switch that out too. But other than that, I won't take your detector or nothing like I got that. Three, three pinpointers because I got to wear the. I get. I have one that's mounted to the one that I use in the water, mm-hmm. and then I've got my new Z Link wireless pinpointer. That I use when I wear, you know, hunt with my Max, and then I've got another one that I use because, you know, there's usually somebody wanting to detect with me or something. So right. I let them use the the pro. But uh, I don't know if you. A lot of people don't know that the they're starting to advertise the uh, the Garrett Carrot now at 20 feet submersible, not uh, 10 feet submersible anymore. Nice. Nice. Um, you know something I, I wanted to say that I just recently found out about Garrett. Um, that they they have they have concentric coils. I didn't know that. Oh Did yeah, you know yeah. I the Bill Bill Marsh that's listening in. I I don't know if you you use a concentric coil or not. I know you you really come with the AT Pro, but. Buddy, I'd be looking into that, man. I I just, man, that's what I want to hunt with in the field is a concentric coil. Oh, here goes Matt yep. talking about detecting in the snow. The adventures in snow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. One time it snowed last, I guess it was last year or the mm-hmm. year before, and I was so... I had cabin fever so bad, <laughs> and I'm not used to detecting in frozen ground. So I just ran up to the local park and uh, was detecting near this little playground, and I'm, like, trying to chisel the the ground was so rock solid frozen. I'm <laughs> not used to digging in that. So I was like, ah, I think I'll just wait another day or so until it warms up a little. I think I was telling, I don't remember who I was just talking to, but I remember uh, one year, like, we had a really long snow in Ohio, froze, frozen ground and snow, and it kind of, you know, the snow was melted away in a lot of places, and some places it kind of opened up, but it was still bad. But I had cabin fever so bad, I went out, and I actually took some dirt clot, frozen dirt clods home that I chiseled out of the ground that had good signals in them. To, to see what I dug because I, could, I couldn't break them open out there, so I had to let them thaw out. And, and so, yeah, <laughs> cabin fever's rough. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Luckily, I mean, I don't know about where, you know, you live in Texas. Today was about 60, got up to about 60-something degrees, and it was yeah. fairly sunny. I wanted to get out, but I was already working on a different project, so I was like, uh, just wait. I, uh, <clears throat> for the first time, what, Saturday? Saturday. And Saturday night was the first time this year that I put on long pants. Or oh, last, really? yeah, last, this, all, the, all this winter. Because um, I'm from Ohio. Like, you guys... It cracks me up when it's like 50 and sunny out and I see people in like big, <laughs> like snow suits and stuff. And I'm, and I'm out in shorts and t-shirt and flip flops and they're looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm looking at them like you're crazy, you know, like my God, it's 50 degrees. Are you seriously in long? I seen a woman that used to walk her dog and I'm not kidding you. If it was 60 degrees or lower and I'm talking beautiful days, she would have a great big, like something you'd see in Alaska, 
like these big, <laughs> heavy, like, 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 um, like, like snow for riding snowmobiles and pants and everything. That's so funny. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just like, yeah. you gotta be kidding me. It's crazy. I, I, I wear, what I usually do when I'm out metal detecting is I go in layers in the winter because if I don't go in layers, because you know how I get, how you get is you get out there and you're metal detecting and then you're like, you start to warm up, so I'll just usually, like, have on a coat with then a hoodie, then a long sleeve under that, and then a T-shirt. And then that way, that's <laughs> just when the, the first the coat will come off, and then a little bit later, the hoodie. <laughs> so if you notice in my videos, sometimes you'll see, is he wearing something different? <laughs> what happened is, that's my, one of my layers are off, because, you know, you you get out there and you're hunting and you just start, oh, I start getting hot fast, even when it's colder weather. I don't know. Are you the same way? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way in Texas. I layer, I, I put a thin hoodie over my t-shirt and at some point it comes off. No, I'm serious. Well, That's all I do. Really? Like, like it doesn't get cold enough here. I mean, this year, I'm serious. I've been out in shorts every single time. I've not even had long pants on. My youngest son has worn uh, jeans two times this winter so far to school. Yeah. I I don't, he, he wears shorts. I'm like, honey, don't you need some pants on? No, I'm fine. I'll be inside most of the day at school. So it's like, (laughs) I don't know. I'm not me. I just, I, I don't, I mean, it's a, I'm not judging. It's just a difference in, you know, where we, where we grew up and stuff. But, uh, I just, I don't know. I like when it's 50 and sunny and the wind's not blowing, like I might throw on a hoodie, but usually I'll start detecting. I got to take it off. Um, cause it's sunny it, cause it's sunny and it's not windy and it's, it, it feels beautiful out. Right? Yeah. I'm cracking up at Matt, Matt's comment down there. He said, Mike likes to detect in a Speedo. <laughs> right. I would if I could. Oh, yeah. gosh. Hey, Matt. Yeah. She, yeah. Gypsy called. We <laughs> talked yesterday, I think it was. I got to tell. I'm going to tell, tell on you. The first time Uh-oh. I met Matt, like... Matt's a great guy and talk to, but if you get together and hunt with Matt, I'm telling you, he's got, he, he, he looks like a, like, like when I think of a serial killer, I think of Matt, he's got those crazy eyes. <laughs> They're always moving. He's super high strung. And I like, I, I love Matt. I mean, love him to death, but I keep my hand on a pistol in my pocket when I'm, I'm just waiting for him to snap. He's got crazy looking eyes. And he's super high strung. Like, like we're fat guys. Like, I'm not high strung. You know, I'm easy going and just do, 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 do. Matt's like high strung. And it just, yeah. So I, I, <laughs> she called and she was talking about taking a, uh, you know, how great it'd be for us to take a spring trip and um, to come back and detect with Matt. And I'm like, I don't think I can go, but Matt is a super good guy. You'd have a great time. He looks like a serial killer, but I promise you're safe around him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he, uh, he warned me, Matt. He warned me all about <laughs> you and, and how you look like a serial killer. But um, <laughs> Yeah, he makes me a I little antsy. Bring my gun with me when I go to Texas. Yeah, he moves real fast and stuff. And I don't know, like he did just like uh, keep my, I keep one. One hand in my pocket, the other one on my detector swing and just keeping an eye on him because I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he's super high intense intensity. Yeah, true. He is, man. Stresses me out at times for sure. And and he'll get like like when you're on the phone, it's normal, but when you're in person, he's like I like just he talks real fast and stuff, and I'm like, slow it down, man. Calm down. Quit, quit giving me the creepy killer eyes. 
<laughs> no, Matt's a great guy. Absolutely great guy. I don't care what everybody else everybody else says about you, Matt. You're a great guy. <laughs> you should see what Matt says. You should see me on sugar. I don't even do caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, when we first started talking, he said he he can't drink coffee and stuff. And then when we met, I'm like, oh, oh, I see why. I see why. <laughs> yeah. God, I'd hate to see that guy on coffee. It's probably dangerous himself and others. But, uh, yeah, yeah. What else are we going to talk about? What else you got? Anything? Um. I don't know, Wayne just said, uh, you know, you can come to the Rendezvous Colorado hunt that we're going to be doing in June. We have a Speedo hunt. (laughs) (laughs) You can wear your Speedo. Oh, God, people. It would shut the place down. (laughs) People would be running and screaming. You don't want me in a Speedo. It's, it's. I promise. I mean, even tight underwear and stuff's like, uh, you need to put some shorts on or something, buddy. Yeah, it's not attractive. It's not attractive. No, she she likes she likes this fat guy. I'm just kidding. She's like, hey, fat guy, you look cute in them, them tight. Okay, we're getting off track. Let's change. Yeah, we're getting off. Track. We're getting off track. Yeah, but uh. I would love to, Wayne. It's just, it's so hard right now with the baby and stuff and taking off and stuff. You know, um, I'd love to come back, go to Ohio this spring, but Steph would have to have time off and we'd have to plan it and stuff. And uh, I don't know. I'd love to. Um, Yeah, Matt says, come on. Who said Speedos and detectors don't mix? No, it's fat guy and, and Speedos don't mix. That's the problem there, Matt. <laughs> Speedo hunt. Oh, Lord. I, Greg I says TMI. <laughs> right. TMI. TMI. Yeah. I don't know. Greg. Greg's offered to uh, have me over to Biloxi a few times. I don't know. Uh, he might want to see me in a Speedo. He sure has offered quite a few times. Maybe for you, <laughs> Greg, I would do it. If we were on private property and you wanted to see me in a Speedo, Maybe. I'm an embarrassing. <laughs> I just go to the a... beach and, and metal detect. Man, I had some crazy things happen to me when I lived in Galveston on the beach. Oh, I bet. I bet. <laughs> Guys come up with their speedos and I'd be metal detecting. Oh. Oh. I'd just kind of meander away as, soon as, as fast as I could. Is it me or does even like, like you could take a male model and put him in a Speedo and it's still wrong. Do you agree? Like guys just don't look good in Speedo. That's not a, that shouldn't, should have never been a thing. Should have never been a thing. Yeah. Greg says, his dream come true. Right. And uh, Wayne said, better than a wetsuit contest. (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, I haven't I'm done a lot. Wetsuit, I mean, I've been thinking about getting a wetsuit for, you know, doing some uh, winter river hunting. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, I mean, I've got waders, but, you know, I kind of look like Gumby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You're not very flattering. <laughs> I, think, I think I hurt uh, Matt's feeling because he, I, I haven't heard back... We haven't seen him uh, in chat since I talked about serial killer eyes. Look, uh, I'm not man. saying he's a serial killer. I'm just saying if you ever hunt with Matt, let somebody know who you're with and where you're at. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Bill said, <laughs> I would look like an egg balancing on two toothpicks. Yeah, right, Bill? Yeah. Ugh. Like... I'm imagining myself in a Speedo and getting nauseous just thinking about it, like that mental picture in my head. Like, that's just not, that's not, that's not cool. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty uh, bad. Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah, we should change the subject. <laughs> right. Right. Yikes. Uh, Yikes. Yeah, time to change the subject. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, a wetsuit would be cool. I used to. Did I ever tell you my 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 uh, river story? Uh uh-uh. uh The 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 weird yeah. thing in the water. Uh, 
I don't know. Go ahead. Go for it. I'm I don't think I've ever tell. told it on here. So let me let me tell you, tell okay. you this. It's not really metal detecting related, but so many years ago I used to fish and uh I I I had a pair of waders and and I'd go down the river and walk down the river and fish. Well, I used to make my own lures and everything and spinner baits and and I I'd made some spinner baits over the winter and I had a uh, some cabin fever. So I went down to the local river and I'm tossed. I just wanted to see how they worked. Um, how, how they mm-hmm. went, swam through the water and way down around the bend, coming around the bend, I saw, saw a guy coming, walking towards me. And the closer he got, the more I could tell he was shaken. Um, he was shaking good. And I'm like, Hey, are you all right? Do you need help? Yeah, and I'm like, he's like, yeah, I'm fine. And, and he kept getting closer and closer. And I could tell he was shook up bad. I didn't know, you know, if he had a sugar issue or what was going on, but he was freaking me out. And, and hey, are you okay? You know, because he's in water. If he goes in with a, you know, I, I just want to make sure. And he finally gets up close enough and gets out of the water. And, I mean, he's still shaking. And I'm like, man, what's what's going on? What's wrong? And, you know, and, and he finally told me, he said, and this has been many years ago, I, I don't remember, you know, word for word or anything, but it was like, um, you know, I think he started with, you know, he was probably in his 60s. He looked like an outdoorsman, like like what you would see on the, on the cover of Field and Stream, you know? Um, yeah. A very healthy fit, 60-something. And he said, I've been doing this all my life, walking, walking rivers, fishing them. He said, I take pictures and I paint them and I sell them to, to play. He goes, so I do this all the time. I've been doing it all my life. And he said, but I just saw something in the water that I can't explain. And I'm like thinking catfish, you know, and I kept naming, he's like, no, no, no. I mean, that's all he just, he just, no. And he didn't know, you know, and he, he wouldn't go into details, but I mean, you know, he had seen it way farther down the river and I bet that bend in the river was probably a good quarter mile away. And you can imagine how long it took him to get to me. You know, I didn't see him shake, but he'd seen it earlier, you know, uh, and he was still shook up. So I don't know. That was really creepy to me. And, and I, I couldn't really get in water after that. You know what I mean? Because this yeah. guy, I mean, this guy knew what he was doing and he knew it wasn't a catfish. He knew it wasn't this. And I just kept naming off different things that I could wonder, think of. What's that? that has, wonder if that's, you know, I remember you telling this story now and, you know, we're, we've talked about, you know, cause I do a lot of river and water hunting in the house, yeah, you don't want to detect with me in the rivers because of the snakes and creatures and yeah. all the other stuff. I wonder, if, you know, after that happened to you, that that kind of created that, you know, fear. You know, well, I I had already I had already had a fear, but there weren't any poisonous snakes, at least in that part of Ohio. Um, so. I struggle because I'm not a big fan of snakes, but yeah, that definitely, because I had waded that river several times. Um, so for him to, you know, to see him so shook up and so, yeah. you know, just beside himself and, you know, what he, I wish I would have questioned more, made him describe it. He didn't want to talk about it. He didn't. He just kept saying, no, it wasn't that. You know, cause I'm, you know, catfish, I've seen catfish in Ohio, six foot long, at least five foot long. So I, that was my first thing. Cause he said it was big. I mean, and I'm like, he's like, no catfish. And I'm like, carp, you, you know, no, no. I mean, he just, he oh. was adamant, but he didn't, he didn't have a clue and he, he really wouldn't go in detail, but I wish I'd have pressed more. I don't know. Yeah. But, cause now you're going to forever be, you know, wondering what that was, you know? Um, I was looking at the comments in the chat, and Wayne was saying that he was in a river in Pennsylvania back in the 80s, and this copperhead black snake uh, came towards him while, I guess, while he's fishing, hooking, let's see, he threw it on the shore, and then a bunch of kids ran over to grab it. 
not a good Gamble. spot. He had to run back and get out of the water and catch the snake and throw it back in the river. But yeah, I mean, it, it's all these different creatures, you know, <laughs> that reminds me of this weekend when, um, this, this past, uh, weekend when I was in, uh, in Colorado and, uh, we were at the, at the booth, at the watch booth, and I've been saying that we need to get him on. He's agreed to, but he says he's not a good talker, but he's got some good stories. Once All we have to do is come up with the questions. He's got some good stories. It's Terry, Terry Carter, um, those of you that haven't checked out his, his um, um, YouTube channel, uh, be sure and do that. It's just Terry Carter. And uh, anyway, we were we were in the booth, and <laughs> Terry was cracking me up. So what he would do, Terry would uh, take a Wayne's metal detector, his Garrett AT gold, and as people would walk by, he would hold out the detector and go, let me detect the change in your pocket, you know, <laughs> just to get the conversation <laughs> thing. Just kind of get people to look over, you know, at the booth and stuff. And uh, Terry would ask people, you know, what's your best treasure story i know you got a good treasure story and like uh there's one video he just posted it was a lady uh that was out fishing i think in mex somewhere in mexico and uh she um saw this bone exposed so i don't want to give the whole video away I have to go look at it she ended up digging it up and there's photos of that she took you know, of the um the, she dug up the skull and bone and uh the human but, yeah, but it's um a very large skull. I mean the jawbone she said was like three oh, times you, bigger her You jawbone. gotta link us. You gotta link put a link in the chat. Yeah, so it's just Terry Carter um YouTube, just Google and his his um uh, anyway, his uh uh, logo is just like a pirate skull, um, pirate skull with, you know, skull and crossbones. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to find. But, uh, yeah, um, yeah, you, you gotta, gotta look, gotta watch that video. But anyway, what I'm getting at is Terry, you know, it's top and he, we've got to have him on here. I'm going to go bug him. <laughs> yeah, Doug, bug him, get him uh, yeah, on yeah. here. Next week or so, uh, but anyway, I mean he's agreed, but he keeps saying, you know, he's he's not a talker, but he really, really does a lot of research and a lot of things. But he had stopped this one guy and got this one guy. Talk, well, actually, this guy was a fan of his that has watched his videos and uh, came up, and uh, we were just uh, talking about a bunch of stories and and. Uh, Stuff. And this guy was talking about, you know, I mean, I, I, you often wonder about the things that people encounter while they're out metal detecting, you know, some, some interesting, you see a lot of interesting creatures and little things, sometimes things that you can't explain. Right. But uh, anyway, this guy um, talks about, he, he was telling us about, uh, he was out in the woods and all of a sudden, uh, this uh, was his wife and daughter were with him. I don't remember all the story, but long story short, supposedly this creature, Sasquatch-looking uh, description, <laughs> he didn't think he never saw it. He kept hearing these weird noises, but apparently his wife and daughter saw it, and they followed them all the way back up to where they were staying. And oh. his wife turned around and was, like, freaked out by what she saw. Wow. Uh, but, I... anyway, it's interesting. <laughs> I just thought, you know, I mean, we encounter a lot of interesting stuff while out metal detecting, but I'd like I... to have some some night where <laughs> sorry, I'm reading Greg comments. That's what right. I'm you know? <laughs> I, you know what? I am very open minded to those, all that stuff, but I'm also very skeptical. I, I right. you know, right. um, but 
You know, the giants, I, I think that there's a good possibility that there were a race of giants and archaeologists and, and different um, government entities have covered it up. It doesn't fit our timeline. And um, we, we've known archaeologists to do this before, that kind of thing. Um, I, so I think it's very possible. Um, I I think that there's a possibility that there's Bigfoot or something. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, I just don't know. I, I I don't know if I've ever told you my, my alien story, but I'll tell you just a real quick story. Um, I, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I was helping a friend on work on a guy's house. Um, my friend was, was way behind because, uh, he had so much work to do. He had stuff lined up for months. And so I'd go help him on the weekends. He had a big job. It took about three weeks to do. And he was a retired, I I don't know if it was a Colonel or general, he was very high up retired from, and he retired out of right pat. And, um, I, I know this is way off the subject. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll say it quick. Every Saturday, so I'd go out there on Saturday and, and like the third Saturday, every Saturday, um, we'd get, we'd get done with our work and we'd sit out on his porch and talk military and drink a beer with him, drink a beer or two. And, uh, the last Saturday we're there, my friend smiling, totally laughing. He goes, so is there aliens out at, out at right Pat? And the, the, this guy that we'd had hours of conversation with just really got along, just loved what he was about and, and his stories and straight faced as could be said, yes. And we were both in shock that we, we didn't say anything like I, to this day, I wish we'd asked more questions, you know, like, what do you mean? But it took us both by surprise that he said that. So I'm, I'm definitely open to, to things being out there. But, yeah. I, and I would love to do those shows. You know, I think anybody, I know that's off the subject, but I think just about anybody I know who metal detects, I mean, we have that curiosity, you know, we, we, and the curiosity of treasure and everything else. And, and, um, I, I think, um, I just, I, I think it would do good. You know, I, I yeah, think people I think, would do okay. I mean, just even with what people see and encounter when they're out metal detecting or treasure hunting and stuff or camping, you know, it would be interesting to hear some people's stories, even if it's about something not uncommon. I mean, everybody's got some story that, you know, something they've encountered, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've all, we've all, uh, exactly. Um, matter of fact, let me, let me look up his name. Um, this Thursday on the All Metal Mode UK podcast, uh, let me find it, is um, Steve Mara, found, founder of Phenomena Magazine. Uh, we're going to talk about Roswell and extraterrestrial terrestrials and all kinds of different, you know, kind of paranormal, any of that, that kind of stuff. So, uh. I'm looking forward to that. I mean, cause I've always been interested oh. in that stuff and I think most of us have, you know, we've, and like you said, I, I don't care if you've been out in the woods, a good part of your life, you're going to run into things. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's anything, but we definitely ha- have all seen, you know, I've told the story about out metal detecting and, you know, when I'm in my groove, it's hard to get me out of it. And I'm, I'm metal detecting on this cold, windy day with a buddy of mine. And just all of a sudden, my hair stands up, and I stop what I'm doing, look up, and a dust devil pops up right behind, well, out behind him pretty far, and it goes north and east and then south. It's I mean, this dust devil's going everywhere. And then all of a sudden, it works his way up to him and went right through him and then just dissipated. I'm not saying there was anything. But something alerted me to that. Something out of the blue. Yeah. 
Yeah. I went from in my yeah. zone to the hair standing up on my neck and, you know, just realizing, you know, getting a creepy feeling and watching that. And it was like, oh, you know, just kind of send chills through you like, wow, you know, I don't know. Hey, it could have been nothing but a coincidence, but it was weird. You know, we've all had yeah. stuff like that happen. I, I used to ride ride ATVs down in Southern Ohio at Wayne National Forest. And it's a big, you know, there's over 80 miles of trails down there. And I've never witnessed anything, but I've had guys say they've, they've been followed in, in the woods at night and, um, heard things off and they, they kind of cry. I rode with some guys one night. There was about, I think there was about six of them, if I remember right. And they said all night, they felt like they were being followed and watched no matter where. And they, they just, the filing yeah. went back to camp yeah. and it just, they were all kind of creeped out. So yeah. I, you know, yeah. I think if you spend your time out there long enough, you're going to, you're going to come across stuff that makes you question what's going on. So, but yeah, good times, okay. good stuff. Well, um, what's his name in the chat? Sorry. My, uh, Ryan was talking about, uh, rock with up Rockwell, Texas. About yeah. The giant I seen that. So I, I just pulled it up, so I'm gonna look at that. But yeah, Terry Carter, um, well, definitely, I'll bug him and get him. Yeah, on get here. him on for sure. He's got some There's... really interesting. But it's always got good treasure stories. I mean, he goes back and he digs in history and he talks to old timers that can tell you all kinds of good treasure stories. And I mean, uh, it was just really, it is, really isn't had that. Great now is that is that Wayne's good buddy? And I think he talked about him when he was on because he go he looks for caches and stuff too, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks for the big stuff like the Spanish treasure. And yeah, stuff I think like that. I think Wayne's mentioned him a few times when when yeah. he, we had Wayne on. Yeah, that would be way cool. I'd love that. Um, you, you look up the, if if you get into the the giants, look up the giants of Ohio. There's some really interesting stuff. Uh, oh about them. yeah, he's got a, several videos on the on the uh, giants in Ohio. Mm-hmm. So you get a chance to check out some of those. And then um, I don't know. He's he's constantly putting a different video up about something. It's either pertaining to something along that nature that just does you know. They've done a lot of interviews, people that have experienced things, you know, firsthand that, you know, like that woman this weekend, I mean, last weekend or whatever, that found that skull, and she ended up, you know, taking those photos that that are on there, uh, on her phone. Did she uh, leave the skull? Before she uh, called the authorities Uh. and whatever, got it care of it <laughs> 595 yeah. just off of 33 i used to live right off of 33 i can't think where 595 was but yeah i mean there's all all kinds of crazy stuff out there i don't know but uh yeah we we, we i would love to get him on you gotta yeah okay i'll talk to him again bill said corn yeah, fed and to- inbred country boys that could be a possibility bill that could t- when you get into Southern Ohio, yeah, I've seen some <laughs> stuff like that. I'm a big dude, and when you're when you're going down a gravel road, dirt gravel road, and all of a sudden you start seeing a lot of hillbilly. Like I'm a I'm a hillbilly or redneck or whatever you want. I don't care what you call me. I don't know what I am, but I mean I'm definitely country. You know, I'll, I'll agree with that. I'd like to think I'm I'm more than white trash. Um, I don't know. Jury's out on that, I guess. But uh, yeah, I've been on some on some dirt roads in Ohio, Southern Ohio. It's like, oh man, this is. You know, you're just waiting it to it to for it to dead end into a, uh, you know, a little little uh, wooded patch and a bunch of hillbillies come out, you know, and the fiddle starts playing, and you're like, oh goodness, yeah. There's some good places yeah. like that in Southern Ohio. Yeah. I was just thinking uh, how far we've gotten off. <laughs> we yeah, from, yeah. Frequencies to speedos to, uh, you know, giants and aliens. And, you know, but it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. You is there any... to wrap it up? Yeah, I think we got, we got far enough off track that we can wrap it up now. I think that's our signature, isn't it? 
Um, maybe next, maybe next week we'll end it on like anal probes or something, you know, with aliens. <laughs> Uh, that might be a good way to get off track and end it next week. But, uh, yeah, talk to him and see if you can get him on. I, I would like that. And that would go all right, right along with the UK show and uh, all that. So, uh, okay. Good deal. I will well, talk to him again. All right, Gypsy. I had fun, like always. And, uh, uh, don't forget tomorrow night, me and Matt, um, we'll be talking about some. Maybe him and I will talk about anal probes. I don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but uh, he hasn't gotten out. It's been snow and everything else, and uh, so I know he don't have much, and um, I could talk more about the same old stuff I've been talking I don't know what we're going to do. Crap. Crap, <laughs> Gypsy. I don't know. We'll talk about kids and wind on anal probes for oh, yeah. a- aliens, a- anal probing people. All right. All right. Let's, let's wrap it up before it gets even crazier. All right, everybody. Uh, I'm like reading in the track. All right. Good night, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. Join us tomorrow night. Same time. Thanks for listening.